on this little mini video, I want to explain uh, another concept of the Highland Circle. So it builds up on the preceding video where I'm explaining the concepts of power factor, the voltage waveforms between voltage and current, and how we come up with the Highland Circle. The Highland Circle describes the trajectory upon which the induction motor's current walks as I keep increasing the load. At the no load point, I throw my shadow over here, no load, there's no power, there needs to be no shadow on my no load current, so that's why I'm off by 90 degrees. I keep increasing my load, and my current phaser is going to keep wandering up. That will be a pretty decent load point. So now the question is, what happens as I keep walking up here, and does that mean something when I'm starting to drop back down? Well, let's think about this. <coughs> My highest possible shadow, where is it going to be? Exactly, it's going to be on that point right there. So my highest possible shadow is going to be that. I cast my shadow. So here I'm having the green case. A fairly high low point. This is my useful current, the one that I use to create real power, which to more than 90% for decent sized motors, more than 90% of this shadow is used to push the power out of the shaft because the motors are very efficient, industrial sized motors. Well, the highest possible shadow that I can create is right here. So that would be that amount of current. If I keep wandering a bit further, my shadow is going to start to collapse. So let's say that I'm ending up on that point right there. My current is here. My shadow is going to be shorter. That means that on this high point, the motor is pushing more power out of the shaft than on this point right here. How does this relate to the operation of the motor? Well, I'm going to draw the, tur the torque speed curve. What do I know? I know that at synchronous speed, for 60 hertz, it would be 3600 or 1800 RPM. For 50 hertz, it would be the 3000, 1500, 1000 RPM numbers. I know that at synchronous speed, I have zero torque. I know that I have a certain startup torque. Let's just draw a number right here. And the way how the motors behave, they have this type of curve right here. This portion, this portion right here, that is a very good approximation to say that it's linear. So my rated operating point, let's say it's right there. If I go up here, that is my rated operating point, which would translate into this amount as rated torque. That on the EXP software is the red solid line on my torque ripple graph. That is my 100%. But I said that I was going to relate the Highland Circle to my torque speed graph. Well, if we keep saying that the motors are highly efficient, then it is a reasonable approximation. It's not right, but it's a reasonable approximation to say that the length of this phaser displays the amount of power that I'm pushing out of the shaft. The mechanical power. The mechanical power P mechanical is defined as 2 times pi, because it's a rotating system, times torque, times speed, and the speed is in hertz, and the torque is in newton meters. With this equation, I have a mechanical output power. What does it mean? 
at zero speed, I have some torque, but I have zero speed, so I really don't have any output power. So on startup, I have no output power. As the speed goes up, I keep increasing my speed, and I also keep increasing my torque, so my power goes up. But once I cross this point, my torque is going to be collapsing rapidly. That means that this point is actually not totally exactly, but pretty exactly that point right there. That is my breakdown torque. Why is it called breakdown torque? Well, let me throw a normal load torque. Let's say a, a pump or a fan. Those are cubic <coughs> power. I'm going to have a tiny bit of friction that I have to overcome. And then I have some kind of a parabola looking curve. So for centrifugal loads, this here, the torque goes up. This is my load torque, TL. It goes up with a square of speed. What does it mean for my power? That goes up with a square of speed. And then I multiply it with speed. That means that my power of the load is proportional to the cube of the speed, the third power of the speed. But now I need to relate the blue and the green. The blue is the capability of the motor, and the green is the requirement of the load. Well, if I have more torque available by the motor than the amount of torque that the load demands, I have this delta right here. As long as the motor pushes harder than the load is requesting, they can only happen, only one thing can happen, and that is that the load starts accelerating. So as long as I have a positive distance between my green and my blue lines, I have an acceleration torque, T acceleration. Until I reach this point, when I reach this point, I have my acceleration equal zero. Why? Because the motor torque is equal to T load plus acceleration. What does it mean? Well, it means that the blue line is equal to this green distance plus my red distance. That's what this equation here means right now. As long as blue is bigger than green, my acceleration is positive. If for whatever reason the motor is spinning at a speed that is higher than this point right here, if the motor is spinning at this speed, what's happening? Well, a T motor is down here, a green line is up there, now I'm having an acceleration that goes in the opposite direction. That means that I'm not accelerating, the load is demanding more than what the, torque, than what the motor can give, so the load is going to slow down the motor. What does it mean? It means that as soon as the speed is higher than the intersection between green and blue, as soon as the speed is higher, the load is going to manage to slow down the motor. As long as the speed is lower than the intersection between green and blue, my acceleration is going to be positive and I'm going to speed up. That means that this point right here is a stable operating point. That's my steady state torque. Now, let's imagine that we have a very, very big problem. A very big problem. And we keep raising this green load line. So let's imagine that my motor is running at this orange point right here, but we keep raising the load. 
have right there, that point, it remains stable because if I go to the right of the point, I'm going to be slowing down. If I go to the left of the point, I'm going to be speeding up. However, if my load point goes beyond this point right here, if my load point ends up being here, because I'm really having a very big problem, let's see what happens. I do have, if I'm finding myself to the right, of this point, now let me draw it differently. Let me draw the intersection like this. If I'm to the right, my load is going to be higher and it's going to be pushing me down. And it's going to keep pushing me down if the green line is higher than the torque. That means that if I raise my load beyond this tipping point, my motor speed is going to collapse. In this case, it's going to collapse down up to this point. On this point, we have the same state as we had before. To the left of this point, we have the difference that is going up. And to the right of the point, we have that difference that is going down. So this is a stable operating point, whereas as soon as my torque line is higher, the load torque is higher than my motor, I'm just going to be drawing down to this point right here. At this speed, the motor burns up really quick. It's a matter of very few minutes. On a die cast motor, the aluminum is going to melt. And on a, um, on a copper bar motor, my steel insulation is going to burn. So reviewing, what did I want to explain on this little video here? I wanted to explain how the Highland Circle relates to the torque speed curve of the motor. I wanted to get the point across of the importance of this maximum point here. That maximum point is fairly accurately, not exactly, but it's fairly accurately the peak point. And that torque right there <coughs> is called breakdown. Breakdown torque. Why? Because if my load pushes beyond this, if my load is higher than that, my, motors, my motor speed is going to collapse. It's going to collapse to a much, much lower speed, and at this lower speed, my motor is going to burn up really quickly if I don't have the protection set right. If I have my trip levels of the relay set properly, then my motor is just going to trip. I protect the motor, but the load stops. Thank you. <laughs>